Hi everybody. So today I wanted to talk about something I don't really like to talk about, but that's gonna be a little bit later in the video, not too much later, but in just a little bit. It's actually gonna be about chainsaws. But anyways, we need to cut this tree right here now, and I wanna explain a few things um, about why and how I'm doing this particular um, situation right here. So what we have is a tree up there. It's a full length tree ready to come out but it's not very big. And today I'm actually gonna show you some small trees. I usually show you kind of bigger trees, but in a, any job like this, you have big trees and small trees. And today I wanna to show you some of the small trees that I'm dealing with. So that's one of them back there, but it's a long ways back in there. So I'm gonna to have to use a long chain to get that tree out. But as you can see, further up in there, I cut another tree and I dropped it. So the tip end is towards the road. So that tree, I'll just, same thing, I'll use a long chain and hopefully it'll be, the trail will be straight enough so I can still pull it out and go down that trail. This is an all new trail that I've been working on. I've been working my way back up into this trail. I've been cutting some of the trees as they're going along, but a lot of the trees are still down there. This is about the furthest end of this log job. But this tree here, which is about already to drop down, I hope to put down right up through there and that would just actually make it easier for, to, for me to get out that tree over there because it won't bind against this tree if it's gone. So we'll put this down and we'll continue from there. Kind of looks like pix pixie sticks to me. I'm not sure how he figures these things out, but it'll be interesting. That's actually exactly what it is. It's kind of like picking up pixie sticks in the, in the kids game. Um, so much of the time I do spend is thinking about how to do it in such a way that I don't have to more work for myself than I, you know, try to make it the easiest way possible. So Ben, if you want to go over there behind that big tree. That this big tree right here? Yeah. And actually, why don't we just take the camera and just leave it right here. And then you can get way out of the way. Okay. I'm going to go down here then. And we'll see about dropping this Where? tree. Oh. There. One of these days I'm going to do something with this camera and I kind of sometimes push my luck a little bit as far as setting the camera up beside uh, trees that I'm cutting down and one of these days it's going to come right down and smash the camera but um, until then we might as well continue pushing our luck as far as the camera goes but not people. That's why I sent Brenda way out of the way to keep her safe.
It seems like all day today I've had troubles, situations where the trees go down all right, but they just don't go in a spot that works best for me to get these trees out of here. Um, so often with big trees, I have to cut logs shorter to get them out. In some ways that's easier. The smaller trees, I want to haul them full length or at least half tree at a time. And so I want to have a nice straight trail that I can do that and and this tree here was really leaning this way and so this is where it wanted to go and so this is where I did put it um, but we have that tree behind us that good sized pine that will stop us from turning into this trail the way I'd like it to do um, all these all these uh, balsams through here I don't care if they go there's a dead pine stub of course that doesn't isn't gonna I could cut that down if I wanted to, but somehow we need to get this out of here. So I think what I'm going to do is cut actually a different trail and cut through these balsam trees right here. That will get me out to my main road. And then I will be able to hitch on. If I cut this log as uh, somewhere up through here, I can back in here from the main trail and hitch on to the further half of this tree and swing it right out of here. But it all takes time and all takes work and so uh we'll just have to see how this goes i guess i'm not sure how much you guys really want to watch of this process to get these logs out um especially today because we've got a little bit more to talk about on some other things as you notice today i have a new saw this is a 572 husqvarna um the reason i have this saw is because my 372 which is an older it's not really, it's just an older model and it's actually, I don't think they even make the 372s anymore. Um, there's still a lot of them out there, but I don't think they made them. So they've gone to a 572. They're both approximately the same size as far as power, but uh, there's there's quite a bit of differences between, between the two. And uh, uh, we'll actually talk more about it after I get this logged down to landing. And, and I wanna show you a few things with my different saws. So for right now, I think we will I don't even think I can get 16 foot around that corner. I mean, I know I can't. So, that being the case, if I cut a couple of these, I actually go take a 16 right through there and spin it around all right, without cutting too much stuff. So. You know, I don't think you've ever really showed people how a lot of this stuff. How much of this do you have to do in a day? Some days a lot, some days a little. But uh, it is a lot of work. And it's also a lot of the reason why you don't see too many people logging with horses anymore. The amount of work goes into making a trail with a skitter. You just drop your blade and knock this stuff all down. And uh, I guess you could say it just makes a mess, but Basically, that's what I'm doing too. I'm making a mess, in a sense. It's not really making a mess compared to what they're doing, but I'm still cutting the same, or ruining the same amount of trees. But so often in a forest, one of the biggest problems with the forest is it gets so overcrowded that it will not grow as good as it should. So. If a lot of this junk isn't get, got rid of, um, or if it's, if it's got rid of, or has been, you know, if it's cut down and got out of the way, it is actually the best thing for the forest because it allows more sunlight to get down to the floor and allows the trees that are left to do much better. So, what I'm gonna do here now is probably just grab one 16 foot log 
and work my way right up to that mess. And maybe I can get enough, I'd probably get a little far, a farther enough actually to be able to spin that around that one balsam tree and actually go out this way. But we'll see. There's, se there's several things I want to talk to you about today. One of them is tapes. <laughs> As you can see, right today I'm using a tape measure. And one good thing, and I want to thank Chips because he's actually sent me quite a few things. But Chips, I want to thank you for this. I've had several of these, but uh, the one I had before this one, the crayon didn't go in there very well. So what this is, is usually or a lot of times when I need to get a crayon to write on my log like that, I will have to take my glove off, stick my hand in my pocket, pull out a chalk, and I use that. And this is so handy because I, I don't, I don't have to have chalk in my pocket, although I still do. Um, also, it just really works good with this coat right here because I can just stick it in there from the string and pull it out when I need my chalk. And I don't have to get my gloves or my hands all chalk. And I can just... Can you use up the whole piece of chalk boom. as well? Well, sure. So I just come right in here and I do this. Now, winter weather especially, different colored chalk and different... Uh, there's some soft chalk and it's called crayons, but um, uh, they, they do work differently on the, on the wood. Different woods, they mark differently. The blue one does not seem to work as good on there as the red one does. So anyways, on this handle, all it is is it unscrews like this. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what these are, but a lot of people don't, I'm sure also. So this is a whole crayon of, it's a lumber crayon. And so you can slide it right in here and then put this cover on and screw it tight. And then you can keep that, keep pulling it out as you use it to have it the right the length that you want. And there you go. And the reason I ask you if you can use the whole crayon is because we have like so well, many little nubs little pieces, at home. Yeah. And the inside of his pockets are all colored and... Yeah, and it's, it's true, you can't use the whole thing. When you get down, you know, this small, it doesn't hold no, it, it very well. That. Well, it's just part but the, of it. But the beauty about this also, that I found over the years is when you have a piece of chalk, I will usually break it in half to carry in my pocket. But even, even a full half piece, I would so often do this and I break it in half oh. again. So I only have a quarter of a piece. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, it, it uh, you know, it stays intact until you get down to the very end. So thanks again, Chip. I love it's it. It's good for winter logging. I don't know what you do for summer logging because you don't necessarily have a oh, pocket top on. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, also one other thing. So we're talking about tapes here. Uh, so this is a tape measure. Now I've used tape, me tape measures for years, but I don't know how many years ago it was. I started going to the actual loggers tapes. Loggers tapes are really nice and, and you see me use them before. You, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. They hang on my belt. They're like 50 feet long or 25 feet long. I don't know. It depends on the different ones. And you, you can stick the nail into the end of the log and it stays in place and you can walk right up through and, and mark your log as you go. The tape measure, it, quite often I'll lose it. And so I've got to, you know, it falls off the end and it won't stay in place. It, it comes back, but it, especially in the winter time, it gets wet and it doesn't come back very good. Whereas the loggers tape, they just shoot right back really good. You gotta hold it so they don't come back too fast, of course, but um, they work really good. But I'm not gonna tell you the brand <laughs> and I'm hoping for their sake, it's just a, a fluke, I don't know. But about a month ago, I just bought a brand new tape and the very first log I hitched it onto, I snapped it to pull it out and the whole end, the point, fell right off it. And later that day, I was able to put it back on, make it work, but I was very cautious because I didn't want it to happen again. But by the end of the day, I lost it again. And then at the very end of the day, the, the hook itself that holds the tape fell right off. So I lost my tape somewhere in the woods. I don't even know what it was. I called the company back and they were very good. They sent me a new tape right off. Very pleased with the company. Very pleased, pleased in that sense. But this is the same brand of tape. It came back. The very first day I tried that, I put the end in the log, started walking about 10 feet, and it popped off. 
everything was still intact, but it popped off. I grabbed my tape and I looked things over and it didn't, it didn't rewind. All the tape just stayed right there. So I went back and I stuck in a log and st started going again and to, to get it to go. And at, at that 10 foot mark, I couldn't even pull the tape anymore. Maybe it's something I can fix when I tear it apart and find out what's going on. But there again, it's this brand spanking new tape right out of the box. Second time, no good. So anyways, I, I, I'm very frustrated with that, but those things happen. And I, I'm, it's a very common tape too. So I'm thinking and hoping that's just a, a fluke, but uh, I'll have to call them up again and complain. And I hate to complain, but um, that's pretty bad when you get two tapes now right out of the box and they're defective. So, All right. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually mark this and I'll cut another 16 footer or so, 14 or 16 depends, there's a little bit of crook up there. And then I will um, get the team in here and hitch on. And I think if I go that way, just a little ways, I think it'll swing around that balsam right there and that balsam and maple behind it so it doesn't bind up. Um, or I might even do one at a time and kind of swing it over there and then hitch on the both or something. I'll Where's do something. Where's the maple? There's a small soft maple right there. Oh, oh, oh that one, okay. So I need to mark one more log and then we'll go get the horses. Okay. Uh, uh. Oh, uh. oh, as you can see, we got the cannon buck today. And we have a very tiny spot to get turned around in. Jeep, 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 calf, 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 I probably should have cut just a little bit more, but I guess we're going to make it. Map you. Map you. Map you. Map you. Map you. Map ha. 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 Oh, that's good. Oh. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to take these, both these, the 14 and the 16. This is a 16 here, um, but uh, okay. But I'm afraid if I hitched on a both and try to go, I'm going to get bound up. So this is what I'm going to try to do. And I think it will work. If I take this 16 footer and put a good roll and hitch on it. And I want to get the chain on here. So that while it's up in the air. Hello, Buck. Buck's kind of last few days since I've started working him. He's a little bit anxious. He hasn't done a lot of logging of late, but he'll settle down. He's actually settled down quite a bit already, but he'll still get better yet. But he is inching forward on me. He's doing the creep. Back up here. Back up here. Brandon, why don't you just go to the heads while I cut these logs. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hey guys. He's definitely doing the weave. What's that? He's doing the weave. Back, back. Hip. Hip. Feel a little bit. Hip, G. Hip. Hip. Up here. Feel it. Oh. A little bit. G. Catch up. Catch up. Oh. Huh? Oh. 
No. Oh. No. Oh. 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 Nice out. Oop, ah, uh, careful. Ah, uh, careful. Ah, uh, careful. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Oh. Back, back, really wasn't what I'd planned, but it really was not what i had planned, but it actually worked out just fine. Mr. Pa, ah, 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 ah. Now I'll go back and get the other one, ha. Huh? Ah, careful. Ah, careful. Step. Careful step. These deadfalls right here are a pain, but deadfalls are also very hard. Ha, ah, and a chainsaw. Ha. Oh. Ah. Yep. G. 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 Ah. Ah. Careful. Ha. Ah. Alright, Brenda. Ha. Ah. Ah. Ha. Oh. Careful, careful, ha. Careful. Careful, ha. Oh. How about? Ha. Bye. Bye up here. Bye up here. Hey, pa. Ha. Ha. Oh. How about? How about? Bye up here. Oh, that's good. No. Oh. 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 You coming right through the same spot? You're good right there. Oh. 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 Just a little bit. Oh. Ah. Bye. Bye up here. 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 Oh. 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 No. Oh, these horses, who oh, have to be, and they are very good about backing over a lot of trash. The careful step. Careful. 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 Oh. So now I can put them together and go. Bye. 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 This filming Bye. today is killing me. He, it's hard to tell where he's going and how it's so brushy it's hard to stay out of the way. Okay, we're good. We'll head this down. Careful step. Oh. Bye. 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 We have a big stump ahead of us that could cause trouble if I don't have these close enough. If they're close enough, so they'll pop over the stump. It's okay. But um, what do you mean by close enough? I want them as close to the cart as possible, so they have a little bit of lift to it. Okay, makes sense. A step a little bit. Careful, a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Oh. Bye up here. Is that the stump right up there next to Ken? Bye. Yeah, bye. Oh. I'm most concerned about this log here because this other log will be on this side. Hopefully they both will, but there I cut it out. Oh. Bye. Just a little bit. Careful. Careful. Oh. Bye. So what I did just there, if you saw it, but I actually released a bunch of links on one side because I want to get the two logs closer together. Oh. So now we're good to go. Yeah. 
Okay, we made it down here with this hitch all right. So I want to talk a little bit about chainsaws. Um, in my title, I said it's something I really don't want to talk about um, because I feel very underqualified to even talk about chainsaws. Um, I've used them all my life. I should know a ton about saws, but I don't. I should know how to do a great job of maintaining them, fixing them up and all that good stuff, but I don't. I should know how to explain to you exactly how to fire your saw but I can't. Um, I just, I, I, I'm not the mechanical type. And so often if I have troubles with chainsaws, I'm, I just, I, I don't even attempt to fix them. I just take them to somebody else to fix them. As far as maintenance goes, I do very little maintenance on my saws, but I don't know why this is. For some reason, even though I'm terrible at maintenance, um, my saws tend to last a long, long time. Um, I've got chainsaws from my son that he's kind of given up on and I've got chainsaws I can remember years ago doing some trading with my brother and getting some old saws and they've still lasted me a long time after that and I'm not sure about this thought but I think it might possibly be because when I'm logging I'll cut generally just one tree maybe two trees down at a time and then the saw cools down quite a lot because I'm going down to the landing with the with the hitch and so it's basically, I cut one tree and it rests. I cut one tree and it rests. I think with uh, guys using skidders, they're cutting um, a lot of trees and the, the saws just get really over, uh, I don't know, overworked, but they just get worked quite hard and they get quite hot. And maybe that's why mine seem to last a lot, long time. I don't know, but I'm still not that very, not that good at with saws or even explaining about saws. So let me start. I do want to file a saw right now to show you how I do do it, um, but I'm not gonna explain a lot on that. Um, but let me talk about my saws. He says he's not very good at filing chainsaws, but a lot of people will bring them, like his friends or whatever, they will bring over their saws to have him file for them. So I really don't think he's that bad at it. Um, and he wouldn't be able to tolerate it with a very unsharp saw because you can't stand cutting with a dull saw so you know I don't think he gives himself enough credit why don't you say that story you always say about um, you know a dull a sharpening the axe or the you know yeah, so do. you can get more done thing I need to think about what that story was I know what you mean, but just try to think how it goes. Oh, I know what it was. So, um, yeah, here's a story you might want to tell to your friends. Um, <laughs> just a stupid little story, but there was uh, two woodcutters out cutting wood, and uh, the one woodcutter, um, at, at the end of the day, he had a huge pile of wood over here, and the other one had about half as much as he did. And so, at the end of the day, the guy that had half as much wood goes to the second woodcutter and says, how is this possible? It seems like you were always um, taking a coffee break and I was working all day long, never stopped. And so the guy with the big pile of wood says, yeah, I was taking a coffee break, but I was also sharpening my saw during that time. So actually he's sharpening his ax, but you understand the point. It's so important to have a sharp saw when you're cutting logs, when you're cutting firewood, whatever you do. And I am very particular about having a sharp saw, although I'm not necessarily the best one to, to learn from as far as sharpening a chainsaw. Also, some of the things I'm going to tell you isn't even very good for a beginner. Um, and so 
and I'll try to explain that also as we go along. But before we get to that, let's talk about saws for a moment. So I have for years been running the 372s. This has been a great saw, but they discontinued making them. My other 372 is in the shop right now and something is wrong with the switch. It's not the actual switch itself, but something else. So they're waiting on parts for that saw. So that is why I bought my new 572 um, because I need another saw. And even though I'll be getting the old one back soon, it's just gonna be nice to have a spare. Um, this is a 562 and this is a good little saw, but it's quite a bit less power than the, the 372 and the 572s. Mm -hmm. So there are some changes between the, the different models, which is the, five, number, the 500s and the 300s. Um, the biggest thing that I'm finding, which is very difficult, is my switch on the 372s, and for all the saws I've had Husker Runners for years, but all the, the, the 268s, the 266s, um, I can't remember some of the other numbers back from years ago, but they all had the same switch right here. So when I'm working in the woods and I'm sawing away, and I'm, for example, about ready to fall off a log, my thumb just almost automatically goes right here and hits this switch to shut it off. You know, it's just something I've done for so many years. I, the switch just is almost second nature to my, to my thumb. Well, on the newer 5 Series, um, this is a different setup. It's, it's, uh, this, this is a switch right here, and so it goes up and down. So you come all the way up to choke it, and then drop it down, and it runs like that. And to, and to kill it, you just put hold down. And what this does is you hold it down, it kills it, but then when you let go, it pops up so it's ready to run at all times. You don't have to actually turn the switch on to start your saw, which is really nice, but it's still hard to do have both switches because my fingers and my brain is just not telling me to push down. It's telling me to slide it in to that off position. So in a lot of ways, I might be better off to stop using my 372s, get another 572 so that the switches are all the same as because this, this is probably the way they're going to be doing it from now on. Um, so there's that difference in these saws. Another difference, and this is a really nice thing, and maybe it's just because it's a new saw, because I didn't notice it with the 572s, but with the, I mean, the 562s, but with the 572s, my new saw, it starts so much easier. Um, with the 372s, if it sits here for even four or five minutes, I gotta choke it again. Whereas my 572, it can sit for considerably longer and you just pull the string and it starts right up. Um, don't know why that is, maybe it's just a, that particular saw, I don't know, but I'm really happy with that. But overall, I'm happy with all the Husqvarna's. Um, my son used to have Husqvarna's, he's gone to, he went to Steel's for a little while and now he's coming back to Husqvarna, so I don't know, he jumps back, back and forth. But I do like these. Um, I think of anything else I wanted to talk to. I can't believe it. He's gone back to Husqvarna? Yeah, he's got a 572. Oh. That's crazy. why. Because they're, they're always going back and forth about steel and Husqvarna. That's why I got the 572 because he said he's had pretty good luck with his. Oh. So, um, I try to think of anything else I want to talk about. That was saws. I guess not. So, I will show you now how I sharp my saw. And some of the reason that we're doing this is because, uh, showing this is because so many people have asked. We've had a lot of people ask, well, how do you sharpen your saw? Can you show us how you sharpen your saw? I'm going to show you how my, I sharpen my saw, but I'm going to also tell you some things. So in a lot of ways, it's the way I do it is not for a beginner running a saw. And most of the time, the people that know how to run a saw and sharpen a saw are really doesn't matter what I say because they've already know how to how to do it. They do it their way. Okay. So we got two things on a saw, and there again, uh, I just I am just the worst person to even explain this all out to you. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, there is a, a friend of mine, uh, John from Vermont, um, that he has a YouTube channel, and he talks about safety chainsaw stuff, safety stuff, cutting trees down. He's actually a professional uh he goes around and teaches people how to do the game of logging um so uh we'll even put a 
It's Logger John. It's Logger John, but there's actually two Logger Johns out there. So, um, and I don't know anything about the other one. So he's a little bit hard to find, um, but we'll put it somewhere in our- We'll put it in the description below the, this video. Yeah, okay. Put a link to his channel. Okay, so let me, I, I decided we'll just sharpen this saw here because my other saws are good and sharp. I haven't been using this saw. Um, I use Oregon chains and the Oregon chains now, it's really nice. They come with a spot. I say that and I'm gonna... This one doesn't have it. Okay, let me show you the other one. So this one has a spot, a, a, a link that's a different color than the rest of them. On my new one, it's actually a brass colored, so you can really, it's very visible. So you know where to start and where to finish. Um, this one is not showing that, so, but we won't worry about that. Um, I keep this little pouch with me, and what it does is carries my file, and I have on my files just a little piece of wood to, for a handle. So it carries my files and it carries what we call the scrunch, which is for tightening up the chain. And that's actually for your spark plug. But anyways. Um, Can you get those I, anywhere? Like No, but there's plenty of places around that sell these. Okay. So to sharpen a saw, you need a round file. There's times where you need a flat file too, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So. What I like to do is I like to be able to sharpen my saw in the woods. So I've been in a habit of over the years, I'll straddle a log like this. I try and find the right log and I try and find a log where I can get my foot all the way down, which I can't do right here on this one, but it's still fairly comfortable. And then I'm able to just stretch over like this and sharpen my saw. On the Oregon chains, they also have a line right there. I don't know if you can see that. Probably can. In the, see that line right there? Yep, I see it. And so that's, that shows you the angle to go when you sharpen your saws. There again, I just can't emphasize enough, I'm just not the person to be showing you how to sharpen a chainsaw because uh, I just don't know all the details and, and I'm, I hope I don't say something that makes it even worse for people. All I can do is show you what I do and what I've done for years. Um, I don't use any gauges. You can actually buy a gauge for this to get the right angle and all that good stuff. I just, I just don't do that, I just file. Um, so what I'll do is I'll lean over the saw and I will just file the same way that line is. And a lot of times I'll actually count my strokes. For me, that works good. Um, you need to make sure it's sharp all the way through. So there's times you may want to go four strokes, sometimes you want, might want to go 10 strokes, but I just tend to try to keep them the same if at all possible. So I'll just stretch over here, then I'll pull it down. and keep filing all the way around till you come to the end. When I do the right, that side here, with, kind of with my right hand, I guess you could say, then, there again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Some people turn the saw around, some people will only do it if it's in their vice, in their shop. There's just numerous different ways to do it, but I tend to swap hands. And so I have to do it left hand and right hand. So on the opposite side, and I go all the way around on the right side first, you know, like this and file it, and then I start on the left side. And so it's just a matter of doing the same thing and just keeping that angle the same and walking right on through. Sounds simple, but it is not. One of my least favorite jobs is filing a saw. I remember years ago, I had a guy named Barry working for me and uh, I remember he would do all the cutting in the woods and I had just my landing saw that I had to deal with. And I'd still get him to do the filing on my landing saw because he could do it so much better than I could. Anyways, it seems like after this many years of doing this work, I should be a pro at it. But uh, I usually can get my saw to really cut good. And I'm very particular. If it doesn't, I'll just sharpen it again because I need to have a sharp, sharp saw. So now I'm gonna talk about the rakers and flat files. And this is where I really, um, caution people because I tend to push it to the limit. Um, I, 
when I'm cutting pine, especially, I like to have the rakers just as low as I can go without it completely kicking out really bad. The lower you cut your rakers, okay, this is the raker right here. That part of the, of the tooth is the raker. And if this gets too high, this part won't be able to cut. That actually stops it from cutting. It also protects the sharp edge because like for on the landing, I tend to have my rakers higher than I do in the woods because it actually protects this from getting quite so dull with the dirt. But in the woods, when I'm in clean wood, boy, I like to have this raker down as low as I possibly dare without it causing troubles. And the troubles it causes, it will have tremendous more kickback, which makes it so much more dangerous. And hardwood is so much worse than softwood. Softwood, you can take the rakers down quite a bit more than you can in hardwood. So to, to take the rakers down, I, there again, I start at a spot so I know where to finish. And I will just start, I'll put my chain right on my leg, kind of hold down like this and just go right crossways. Now they make really good um, gauges, especially for the rakers. And I, I, I should have one, but I don't. I count the strokes and I go with that. And I tend to have fairly good luck as far as keeping it where it should be. Um, but there's no doubt if I had a gauge, it'd be better yet. Um, so anyways, I just I do three or four strokes. All the way through. And then I'll take this off, flip it around. And do the other side. So just same thing. Count your strokes, head on through. I usually, when I, I probably take the rakers down every third time I file, maybe something like that. I don't know, I don't even keep track. But when it starts getting, when it isn't really diving right in, then I want to take the rakers down. Um, so I don't do it every time. But when I do do it, I like to take my rakers down first and then file second, just in case this particular file, there's no, yeah, there's this. Some of these vials are sharp on the edges. This one's sort of this, I'm not really sure. I can't see. Another thing that'd be very wise to do, and I'd hardly ever do it that often. I guess I'm just not extremely wise because of that. But put your glasses on when you go file saw. Um, if if you need them. If I'm, <laughs> and I need them. When I'm at the landing, I will take the glasses I have out of the truck so I can see better. But in the woods, I, I don't because I don't have them with me. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I tend to, uh, maybe stay a little bit farther away than most people would. So anyways, you just go around the whole other side and cut those rakers down. And you can't just, I count my strokes, so I know how it is. With a, with a gauge, you just go down to the gauge so you know, so it's more accurate than the way I do this. Um, what am I missing, Brenda? <laughs> I don't know. I'm learning new things because I, I don't didn't know all that stuff. That is not what I thought a raker was. So in my mind, that wasn't what you were talking about when you were ta telling me about rakers. So. Yep, that's what it is. Now I know. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna talk about filing. And my suggestion is if you're really interested in this, go find someone that really knows their stuff and, and learn from them. Also, any of this chainsaw stuff, um, if you are, or want to learn about chainsaws, I would highly suggest going to the, the game of logging that they have in the whole north, northeast in, in the United States. I don't know if it's around the world or what it is, but um, just so. it's, it's just a, um, a program to teach you how to run a saw properly. Cut down trees properly and be safe. And in the sharpen woods. saws and all this good stuff. So. I don't think that originated in this country, so I'm thinking it's. No, it didn't worldwide or whatever okay um that might just be it for our video for today um i think brenda's getting cold and ready to go home and yeah, i gotta my, put some my toes are getting my toes are getting cold and i need to get some timber out <laughs> it's uh winter time you know the days are not very long so it's nice because we're down here this is the same log job we were on but my landing original landing is up the road we just finished up on that. There's still a few logs up there. I don't think you can see it, Brenda. No, but it's, I'm just showing them. It's a ways up. 
So now I'm right here close to the main road, which is really nice. So I can come in here with my new trailer. That's working out great. I, I got a spot to turn around up there right here. And it's, it's uh, giving me enough room to get turned around so I don't have to back in off the road. And the job's going good. We've got um, not a huge amount of wood left in here to finish up. And uh, then we can get moved on to that big pine that I have down the road. So where you were before. Where I was before. Yeah. So we'll see you next time. Have a good day.